Alrighty, you guys, welcome to part six of Charlie's Corner. Um, we just got done talking about some, um, uh, basically about yeah. Huh. We just talked about some stuff. I'll have to go back on my own videos and check it out. But I really do feel like I need to take a nap. I just laid down for a few seconds. So I almost fell asleep. But um, parasites or illnesses from parasites are not as common as those caused by bacteria or viruses. But it's still important to understand this group of pathogens so you can prevent illnesses they come. Parasites. Did I read that? No. Parasites share some common characteristics. Growth. Parasite, parasites cannot grow in food. They need to be in the meat of another animal to survive. Transfer, eating food contaminated with parasites will cause illness. Many animals can be hosts. Examples include cows, chickens, pigs, and fish. Parasites can also be found in the feces of animals and people. Parasites can contaminate both food and water, particularly water used to irrigate produce. I kind of want to move on to the next chapter already. Hmm. And of course there's still, um, fungi. And so forth, so, yeah. Okay, so... Now, I did get some information from one of my bosses that presented this test, and they said that the thing to really look forward or really focus on was chapters 5 through the rest. So, I, I'm still going to go through chapters 1 through, um, you know, chapters 3 and 4, but since he said to focus mostly on those, I'm going to go ahead and do those chapters first. So I'm going to study those chapters first, and then I think I'm going to go back to those chapters and at least get the important, important chapters that we're supposedly going to focus on out of the way. So I'm actually going to skip all the way to chapter 5. Um, just kind of scan through and see what that's talking about, because if it is more focused on five through the other chapters. I want to make sure I know that stuff and then go back to the other stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and skip to chapter five. So, the flow of food and introduction. That's what this chapter is. In the news, Delhi cited for temperature violations. A major city's health department cited a local deli for not checking food temperatures. According to the inspector, there was sausage being held at 88 degrees Fahrenheit, hash browns at 52 degrees Fahrenheit, rice pudding at 48 degrees Fahrenheit, and cheesecake at 52 degrees Fahrenheit. The health inspector worked with the manager of the operation to help identify steps for taking temperatures. One step included establishing regular monitoring times and keeping a temperature log. The deli manager confirmed that the operation was correcting the problem he added that the health department had scheduled another inspection for the following week. You can prevent this. As you can see in the story above, controlling time and temperature is crucial for keeping food safe. But you must also prevent pathogens from spreading throughout the operation. In this chapter, you will learn about the following tools and practices to keep, help keep you food safe. Preventing cross-contamination, preventing time temperature abuse, Using the right kinds of thermometers to take temperatures and keeping your thermometers thermometers accurate. And um, it even says right here, um, cross contamination, transfer of pollogens from one surface or food to another. Time temperature abuse once again is when food stays too long at temperatures that are good for pathogen growth and temperature danger zone between one or 41 degrees Fahrenheit and 135 degrees Fahrenheit, foodborne pathogens will grow well in it. 
and um, TCH Food, which was the, uh, he wrote that down. Really? The um, temperature control for safety. So that's what that is. So um, I'm going to go ahead and definitely pay more attention to this. This will probably be the last video for tonight because, um, like I said, some things I'm going to have to study on my own without any other distraction or information. So, yeah, but I will definitely keep you guys updated on the major stuff. So, let's get started. So, hazards in the flow of food. To keep food safe, you must apply what you learn in the Surf Safe program throughout the flow of food. This requires a good understanding of how to prevent cross-contamination and time temperature abuse. The path, the path that food takes through your operation is called the flow of food. It begins when you buy the food and ends when you serve it. Um, purchasing, receiving, storing, preparation, cooking, holding, cooling, reheating, serving. You are responsible for the safety of the food at every point in this flow, and many things can happen to it. For example, a frozen food might be safe when it leaves the processor's plant. However, on the way to the supplier's warehouse, the food might thaw. When you receive it, you might not notice there's anything wrong with it. Once in your operation, the food might not be stored correctly, or it might not be cooked to the right internal temperature. These mistakes can add up and cause a foodborne illness. So. Um, right now, we're going to focus on cross-contamination, which everybody should have a general knowledge of that, as it is. Okay, so um, cross-contamination, pathogens that can move around easily in your operation. They can be spread from food or unwashed hands to prep areas, equipment, utensils, or other food. Cross-contamination can happen at almost any point in the flow of food. When you know how and where it can happen, it is fairly easy to prevent. The most basic way is to keep raw and ready-to-eat food away from each other. Here are some guidelines for doing this. Separating equipment. Use separate equipment for each type of food. For example, use one set of cutting boards, utensils, and containers for raw poultry. Use another set for raw meat. Use a third set for produce. Colored cutting boards are, and utensil handles can help keep equipment separate. The color tells food handlers which equipment to use with each food item. You might use yellow for raw chicken, red for raw meat, and green for produce as the prep chef is doing in the photo at the left. Like at my work, we have a green cutting board, but I don't think we have any other colors, but that's basically used for vegetables. Um, cleaning and sanitizing. Clean and sanitize all work surfaces, equipment, and utensils after each task. When you cut up raw chicken, for example, you cannot get by with just rinsing the equipment to prevent pathogens such as salmonella from contaminating food, you must wash, wrench, and sanitize equipment. Know which cleaners and sanitizers to use for each job. And um, prepping food at different times. If you need to use the same table to, pre to prep different types of food, prep raw meat, fish, and poultry, and ready to eat food at different times, you must clean and sanitize work surfaces from and utensils between each product. For example, by prepping ready-to-eat food before raw food, you can minimize the chance for cross-contamination. And buying prepared food. Buy food items that don't require much prepping or handling. For example, you could buy pre-cooked chicken breast or chopped lettuce as shown in the photo at the left. You know, I need a highlighter. I think a highlighter would help me out a lot too. Because I think rather than trying to write all this stuff out. I need to highlight it. It'd be easier for me. So let me go see if I can find one. I'll be right back.
not too exactly a highlighter, but it'll do. It's orange. I just, maybe instead of writing it out, I can definitely just, um, highlight it. So, I'm going to highlight cross-contamination can happen at almost any point in a flow of food. Of course, separating equipment. You want to make sure all your equipment is separating, cleaning and sanitizing, prepping food at different times, and buying prepared food. Definitely much easier to highlight all this stuff. That way I can just go back and look what I thought was maybe some of the most important points in that chapter. Um, the next one is time temperature abuse, which we talked about on pretty much the first chapter. Most foodborne illnesses happen because TC, uh, TCS food has been time temperature abused. I'm going to highlight that. Remember, food has been time temperature abused any time it remains at 41 degrees Fahrenheit to 135. So remember, that's the temperature danger zone. This is called the temperature danger zone because pathogens grow in this range. But they grow much faster at 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 125. These ranges are shown at the left. Very interesting, y'all. Food is being temperature abused whenever it is handled in the following ways. Cooked to the wrong internal temperature. Held at the wrong temperature. Cooled or heated, reheated incorrectly. The longer the food stays in the temperature danger zone, the more time pathogens have to grow. To keep food safe, you must reduce the time it spends in this temperature range. If food is held in this range for four or more hours, you must throw it out. So that's another highlight. So if you have food that's sitting out on the ca uh, counter that has been there for more than three or four hours, and it's not at the right temperature, it has to go bye-bye, or else you could get sick. You know, I really hope I can write in this book. I assume you can because I don't want to get yelled at for writing in it. But I assume you can. Yeah. So, um, that's time temperature abuse. Avoiding time temperature abuse. Employees should avoid time temperature abuse by following good policies and procedures. They should cover the following areas. Monitoring. Learn which food items should be checked, how often, and by whom. Then assign duties to food handlers in each area. Make sure they understand what to do, how to do it, and why it is important. For example, the manager in the photo at the left is making sure the cook can check the temperature of a chicken breast. Tools make sure the right kinds of thermometers are available. Give food handlers their own thermometers. Have them use timers and prep areas to check how long food is in the temperature danger zone. Recording. Have food handlers record temperatures as regularly as the chef is doing in the photo at the left. Make sure they write down when the temperatures were taken. Print simple forms for recording this information. Post it on clipboards outside of coolers and freezers, near prep areas, and next to cooking and holding equipment. Time and temperature control have procedures to limit the time food spends in the temperature danger zone. This might include limiting the amount of food that can be removed from a cooler when prepping it. And corrections make sure food handlers know what to do when time and temperature standards are not met. For example, if you hold soup on a steam table and its temperature falls before 135 degrees Fahrenheit, after two hours you might reheat it to the correct temperature. So once again, we're at the apply your knowledge. An ounce of prevention it says place a check next to the practice if it helps prevent cross-contamination. 
So here's my part. It says, uh, use separate cutting boards for prepping raw meat and raw vegetables. Yes. Wash and rinse a cutting board after uh, prepping raw fish. Yes. Um, buy diced onions instead of dicing them in the operation. I don't think that would be one. Prep raw chicken and potato salad on the table at the same time. Yeah. So I think it's probably going to be one and two. Use separate cutting boards for prepping raw meat and raw vegetables. And uh, wash and rinse a cutting board after prepping raw fish. And maybe it might be three, two. Buy diced onions instead of dicing them in the operation. That might help too, so I'm going to check that one as well. Um, is it safe? It says, read each story and decide if the food handler handled the food safely. Explain why or why not in the space provided. So here's the uh, scenario. Anita had to prepare six tuna salad sandwiches. She went to the cooler and pulled out a, hard, a large hotel pan of tuna salad and put it on the prep table. She was interrupted several times to help with other tasks. After assembling the sandwiches, she covered the pan of tuna salad, dated it, and put it back in the cooler. Did Anita handle the food safely, or why or why not? Um, I think she didn't, only because she kept getting interrupted, so perhaps she wasn't covering the tuna salad and keeping it at temperature, so that's what I'm going to put. I'm going to put no, because every time she was interrupted, she did not cover the tuna salad um, to keep it at or keep it out of the temperature danger zone. Which means that because of the fact that she didn't cover it, yeah, she could have she covered it after she made all the sandwiches, but it is probably already bad by then, so no comment. How much time we got two more minutes. Okay, the last one is Jerry cut up raw chickens on a cutting board on the prep table, then he washed and rinsed the table and equipment he used. After that, he sliced onions and preppers on the same cutting board on the prep table. Before he left for the day, he washed, rinsed, and sanitized the prep table and equipment. Did Jerry handle the food safely? I think he did. Um, perhaps because of the fact that he... Um, washed and rinsed it, but at the same time he should have used a different cutting board. He should have used the vegetable cutting board, I guess. Um, he could have used the different cutting board for veggies, but he did wash and rinse all of his areas. So now it says for answers, please turn to page 516, so let's see what the answers were. Um, it says one and three should have been marked on the uh, ounce of prevention. So I marked one, two, and three. So I guess technically it was only one and three. Use separate cutting boards for prepping raw meat and raw vegetables and buy diced onions instead of dicing them in operation. And I guess he did wash and rinse a cutting board after prepping raw fish. So that I guess could have been acceptable. But yeah. Um, is it safe? No, Anita took out more tuna salad than she needed to make a small number of sandwiches. Then this exposed the tuna salad to time temperature abuse, which made it worse by the many interruptions. So I was kind of right on that, just basically worded differently. And for the second one, it was no, he did not sanitize the table and equipment after he cut up the chickens. The onions and peppers could have been contaminated by the chickens. Hmm. 
very slick, so it left out the sanitation part, which should have been in there as well, so no comment. So, um, we're actually past 20 minutes, so, um, that is pretty much the studying that I'm going to do for today. I'm probably going to do other studying on my own, but ladies and gentlemen, be sure to check out part, uh, parts four through six. Let me know what you guys think, uh, comment, and definitely have a lot more studying to do. I'm going to do a little bit more studying on my own, but, um, tomorrow on Charlie's Corner, I'm going to be, uh, going where we left off so be sure to tune into that so thank you guys for watching tonight's show tonight comment check out parts one through six if you have not seen the first few parts and um i will talk to you guys soon i'm gonna go take myself a nap now though because i'm tired so i'll be back